Welcome to your iconic image. If you want to take control of your image and be a power player in your space, then this is the show for you. Here we will arm you with tools and information to help you grow your brand on purpose. I'm your host, Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Now let's dive into today's episode. Jude Charles is a story-driven filmmaker, brand strategist, and speaker. For over 15 years, he has been producing documentaries for purpose-driven entrepreneurs. He lives and breathes your brand. He digs deep to find the compelling stories that no one else knows and then leverages those stories to scale your business. Welcome, Jude. Marlena, thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to be on the podcast with you today. Well, thanks. So I know that I have a specific way that I go about telling stories for still images, but I know that you've got your own specific way of doing things. So talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. So my uh, specific way that I've developed over the last 15 years, I call it dramatic demonstration of proof. And what that means is instead of you just telling me your story or you telling me how awesome and amazing you are, what I look for is the truth. I look for a dramatic demonstration. So growing up, uh, I used to watch uh, crime drama TV shows. So if you think of like NYPD Blue or uh, Law and Order, I used to watch that with my dad. And one thing I loved about watching those kind of TV shows is that the detectives are always searching for the truth. And very much in the same way, I am searching for the truth. I don't just allow the client to tell me um, this is their story. This is who they are. Like I'm, I'm pulling on the thread to make sure that what they're saying is the truth. But also when I go to film them, when I go to film their stories, is this truly the way you're telling me the story? Is it truly how it's happening? Um, I remember a client that I have uh, in San Diego, his name is Stefan Georgi, and he tells, uh, he tells me in our road mapping session, I do a road mapping session with a client before, and he tells me that, uh, you know, he loves to empower people, like he's driven to empower others. But yet, I wanted to see that for myself. And it's funny, if you, uh, if you ever watch that story with Stefan Georgi, in the first 30 seconds of the video, he's playing a guitar, and then his daughter comes in, and she's screaming, crying at him playing the guitar, but what he does next to me actually illustrates that he really is a person that loves to empower others, that he's not just doing it in his business, but he's also doing it with his daughter. Um, I won't give away exactly how he handles the situation. Um, I encourage listeners to go and watch it, but that to me is what, that's how I tell stories because the story is about a very, very specific moment in time. And what I'm doing is to bring that story to life through a dramatic demonstration of proof so that others will believe in your story as well. Do you ever have somebody come at you and tell you, this is what my story is, and then through speaking with them, you realize that, no, that's really not it? Yeah, oftentimes what, ha- what happens is that uh, people will discount their story. So there's mm-hmm. parts of the story they won't tell because they think it's not important. And again, that's why I like to dig for the truth because... Right. Once I start digging and I ask deeper questions, um, that's when we really get the real story, right? I um, oftentimes, like a client will tell me something about themselves and I'll be like, is that really true though? Is that really who you are? Like, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem like that's what you're motivated by. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I ask them to go deeper, usually you get to the heart and the core of it. I think uh, normally what I say to a client is if we're going to work together, the most important thing is you have to be willing to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. If you're not willing to be vulnerable and transparent, this isn't going to work. Your story is not going to come across effectively. Um, people won't believe you. They won't like, and people won't even tell you that what it is, but they'll be able, like, they'll say, mm, something just didn't feel right about this story. Mm-hmm. And right. for me, that is what, like, when someone comes to me and tell me a story, like, that is what when I'm digging for the truth and I'm digging deeper, that is it. Like I'm trying to make sure what the story they're telling me is truly their story. And they're really being vulnerable about it. How much of the scars and warts do you show? Personally, I like to show a lot of it. I think, so the clients I work with are at seven and eight figures. They're, they've built big businesses, but if you first meet someone and that's what they tell you is about all about their money, that's not very attractive. No matter, even if you're a person that wants to follow them as, as, um, you know, a leader, that's not attractive. And so what I look to show is who they are. I look to make them human. And to me, when you show your words, you show your imperfections, we all know we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. When you show that, 
you show that you've gotten to the, your point of success despite your imperfections. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what's more inspiring um, is that, is that specifically. And, and I do the same thing in my business, right? So like uh, recently I, I write an email and recently I talk about depression, burnout, and anxiety. I had to go through that in 2020, 2021, and I'm still going through it today in 2022. And I talk about that and I, I specifically mentioned that, hey, I'm not saying this so I can get your pity. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this so that you can understand, although I've built a successful business, there are still challenges, right? And you can succeed as well, despite the challenges that you have in your life. Real life is always going to happen. But if you can be inspired by another person and knowing that they got through it, even if you're not going through the exact same thing, you know, they got through it. That means you can get through it too. Right. So I know for me what it looks like and feels like when I know that I've hit on the right story. What does it look like and feel like for you? That's a great question. I am always uh, trying to figure that out because I think I'm working on a docuseries now um, with a client named Darnielle. Uh, the docuseries is called Move to Millions, Millions. And the story... The way that I'm crafting the story, I don't know how I always hit on the right hook or even as I'm making choices in the edit, right? When I'm working with my editing team, like, how do I know this is the right story to tell? Um, it's a tough question. It's a tough question. And, and, and honestly, for me, it's a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling that as this person is telling me this story, like I'm feeling something, I know the audience will feel it too. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, that's truly the only way I know how to answer that is it's, it's a gut feeling and it's a challenge that this person is going through that they're telling me in their story. And now I'm moved by it. Someone else may be moved by it too. And it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because I test the stories out before they ever go live. Like uh, I have someone watch and give me feedback. Someone that's not connected to the story at all, doesn't know the client, doesn't, they know me, we're friends, but they're not connected. And it's always interesting to see their facial reactions as they're listening to the story. Um, and so I, I don't know, I think it's a lot of feedback. I think it's a lot of, uh, I've been studying storytelling since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. I used to uh, lock myself in a room and write 100 page books. And I think because of that fascination with storytelling over 20 years now, um, it's just a gut feeling that I've, I've been able to hone over the years to get to that point where it's like, that's the right story to tell. What do you think has been the most compelling story that you have told up to now? Oh, great question. The most compelling story that comes to mind again is Darnielle. Um, Darnielle Jervy Harmon is a business coach and there's a part of her story where we tell in her first docuseries where she is on a journey to motherhood. She got married at 42 and at the time had never had children and, you know, tries to have children with her husband, but it hasn't gone well. But yet, despite two bad rounds of IVF and having a miscarriage, she builds a nursery and is in anticipation for the child to come or children to come. And to me, that is a move of faith and courage um, that despite the gift is not there yet, she has prepared the space for the gift. Mm. And I think uh, that's one story that's very inspiring. Another one is Steve Harvey, I think. Steve Harvey, uh, the comedian and mm -hmm. now entertainer. Um, yeah, he's uh, everywhere. He's a little everywhere. bit of everything now. <laughs> yeah, we worked together in 2013 when he was releasing his book, Act Like a Success, Think Like a Success. And I had never really known his story before then, but I, I uh, heard an old audio tape of him telling his story. He talks about how... Um, he was on the road before he ever reached success. He was on the road to um, doing comedy shows because he just was trying to find his big hit. And what I didn't know is at the time that he was on the road, he was homeless. So he didn't have a place to stay. He lived out of his car. But he was just following after his dream. And there was one day that he was uh, cleaning up in bathrooms. He used to clean up in bathrooms at, the ho at hotels, wherever, whatever city he's in. And there was one day this hotel specifically had a conference and he didn't want people to see him washing up in the hotel room. So he was trying to wait for, uh, for the people to go through the bathroom and, and, you know, wait it out so that they wouldn't see him washing himself. But the guys kept coming in. It spent two hours. They just kept coming in. He couldn't get a break. 
And so he sat on the edge of the toilet and he cried and he, he thought to himself, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to call my dad and let him know, look, I just want to come home. This isn't working out. This is not what I thought it would be. And he said he heard the voice of God and God, voice of God told him, if you just do one more show, I'll take you to places that you've never been and shows that you've, that you've never experienced before. And after that moment, he got the call to do the Showtime at the Apollo. It was the very next day. He did the show that he was going to do in that city, and then he got the call for Showtime at the Apollo. And it was literally Showtime at the Apollo that, that allowed him to reach the success that he's reached today. And I think that's an inspiring story for me because, honestly, I've been an entrepreneur for 15 years, but I don't think that I've never been homeless. And, <laughs> and I don't think that I would continue after being homeless. I think that that's where my limit is. And to see the success that he's had and to know, like, he was homeless for three years, but now he's made it. That, to me, is an inspiring story that that I carry with me every day. Mm, love that. Yeah. So let's say someone like Steve Harvey tells you that story or you write out a story or, or whatever it may be. How do you take that yeah. and make it come to life in a video? Sure. So with Steve Harvey, we did it. The behind the scenes that we were filming is him releasing the book launch, right? And there's these people who are excited to see him, excited to get an autograph version of his book. Um, so that's how we did it with the Steve Harvey story. With Darnielle, it is her telling the story, but then you're seeing her in the nursery. Um, you're seeing different shots of the nursery, and then you're seeing her. She, uh, she talks about sitting in the room and she prays in the room every morning because she's just waiting on this gift from God. And so I'm looking for what I call dramatic elements. Um, there's five different ones. There's behind the scenes, social proof, live illustration, um, a transformation, and unique mechanism. And when I'm looking for those five, those are common marketing terms. But again, I'm looking to show the visual elements of that. So with behind the scenes, it's literally like I'm a fly on the wall. This moment is happening. You're seeing it the same way I'm seeing it. With social proof, we're used to that term with testimonials and customer stories. Well, I'm looking at how do people physically react to talking with you or talking about you? Like if someone holds their hand against their chest, that means like, oh, there's a heartfelt moment that's happening. If they have a big smile on their face, that means they're actually enjoying talking to you. So I'm looking for those with social proof. I'm looking for those key moments um, with live illustration. Oftentimes the story has already happened. So now I'm looking at how do I recreate this story with objects or with people? I did this with an interior designer once where uh, the interior designer mentioned construction is like a puzzle or putting together a home is like a puzzle. So I literally asked the firm, hey, can we get a big puzzle and show the entire team putting the puzzle together, right? That brings it to life in a way from just taking it from like construction is like a puzzle, which theoretically you understand, I brought it to life so that you could see it. Um, transformation is all about before and after we're used to that with, uh, fitness, right? Like you mm -hmm. see someone who may be 300 pounds and then they lose hundred pounds. And so there's a big dramatic shift, but what I look for is life after not just the shift that there's a before and after, but what does life after look like? Again, the best way to illustrate that, that I've heard in the past, I didn't create this story, but it's uh, a woman who's a fitness coach and she receives a picture from her client. And the picture is the client getting on a plane. It's an empty plane and she's getting on the plane. And in the text message, it says, this is the first time in my 40 years of living, I haven't had to ask for a seatbelt extension. Mm. That's life after. Not just losing the weight or putting on nice jeans. It's being able to go on a plane and not have to ask for a seatbelt extension. Um, and then unique mechanism is what is it that makes you unique? What makes you different um, as a characteristic? Sometimes it is like a system or a process, but I think as leaders and CEOs of companies, there's something about you. You're the leader. You're the person that's driving this company forward. I want to show that and I want to bring that to life. Like I want people to really get to know who you are, all your quirks, all your flaws, all the little things that you do, maybe the preparations that you do right before you go on stage. That's unique mechanism. So again, I'm visually showing all these things so that it comes to life in a way that people truly feel and experience your story. They're not just listening to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that uh, people, for example, like Donald Miller talk about, don't be the hero of your story. You want to be the guide to your story. So how do you, how do you navigate that where you are telling the story of this individual, but you are not making them the hero of the story? 
Yeah, I think um, for me, I focus a lot, a lot on just the specific moment in time. I don't know that I necessarily focus on whether or not I make them the hero. I think I focus on what do other people have to say about them and how do they physically react, right? Oftentimes, the entrepreneur is the hero of the story that you're looking at because it's their story, right? Like, it's their journey. But I also look at when I'm showing their quirks and their flaws, I'm also looking at the, the other side of that when people are talking about them. And people talk about their quirks and their flaws. I mentioned Stephen Georgi um, earlier. Stephen Georgi is a copywriter and, and entrepreneur. And he has one friend specifically who's like, you know what? Stefan is a quirky dude. He's 30 years old, but he looks like he's in a 90-year-old body, right? Like he's an older guy. He's, he has a lot of wisdom. But in, and he says that he's weird and quirky. And he was like, you have to be, though. As an entrepreneur, as a copywriter, you have to be. And I think it's that, again, when I'm searching for the truth, I'm not just looking for everybody to talk about how great you are. I'm looking for them to talk about the things that make you different, the, thing, the quirks that you have that some people wouldn't appreciate. And then we talk about how great you are. I think mm -hmm. because I don't just include the entrepreneur in their own story, that is a way for me not to just make them the hero of the story, but showing how other people respond to who they are. There's another person in Stefan's uh, docu-series who talks about Stefan being a family man. And he says, he says in the docu-series how like, he's inspired by that, that Stefan loves his wife, he loves his daughter, and the way that he shows up for them inspires him. And I, I remember asking him, well, why is that important to you? Like, Stefan's an entrepreneur. He's a copywriter. Why, why are you looking at that? And his response was, well, truthfully, maybe because I'm not like that. Mm. Right? And I think that is how you show the entrepreneur as a guide. Again, I don't, I'll be honest and say, I don't necessarily focus on that. Mm -hmm. um, I just focus on, again, how do I show this person as a human being? And when I do that, that it just comes out naturally. And based on what you just said, let me ask you this. How much do you involve and in research into what other people say and what other people think? And is the story that you're being told by your client the one that everybody else perceives them to have? Yes. And again, that's why I, I, I've been using the same line of saying I'm searching for the truth, because even if someone has told me something that I didn't initially discover in the beginning, that may be, I don't know, something bad or something that is a flaw. I will go deeper into that. Um, oftentimes, like I said, clients won't tell me everything because they're holding back and they're not sure if this is important to the story. I, I don't know that I necessarily do a lot of research in the beginning as far as what other people have to say, other than maybe listening to podcasts that they've been featured on or looking at other speeches that they've given, um, testimonials if they have it. But the research process of me speaking to other people usually happens as I'm filming the documentary. In the beginning, I'm only speaking to the client and I'm getting part of their story. If I feel like they're the right fit at that point, then we move forward. And then it's that, at that point that I begin to interview other people in their life. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's for me, I, I make sure to let the client know, hey, I'm not going to show you just roses. Like, it's not going to be everything's roses. I'm going to show the bad part, but I want you to trust that when I'm showing this balanced view of who you are, it will still allow people to get to know you in a three-dimensional way that then they want to follow and purchase whatever it is you have to offer, right? Because that, ultimately, that's the goal. I work with entrepreneurs, and the goal is for them to not only just tell their story, but leverage their story, right? Mm -hmm. And I make sure they are aware, and I try to educate them that in order to leverage your story, it's the good and the bad part of the story that we must tell. So two questions. The first one is if let's say we are telling a story, is it beneficial for us to do our own kind of research, so to speak, and ask others what they, they think, what they believe our story to be? And are they going to tell us the truth or do we need to have somebody else ask? That's the first question. And the second question is then once we have built that, how do we Take it, like you said, because at the end of the day, it, you're an entrepreneur, you want sales. So how do we create raving fans out of it all? Sure. So I do think entrepreneurs or people in general should often ask their friends and family about their perception of their story. I, um, I remember I had a 30th birthday party. So I'm 33 today, but I had a 30th birthday party, closest friends and family. And I remember hearing them talk about 
me and my journey through entrepreneurship. And it was the first time I'd ever heard, at least in depth in that way, what people thought about my own journey. Up until that point, I think I was an entrepreneur for 13 years, um, 12 or 13 years. And it was interesting to hear like even my brother talk about the step that I've taken as an entrepreneur and how it inspired him. I'm the youngest of 10 children. So again, hearing that is, is a bit different. I do think, though, you get more of the truth when you have a third party, mm -hmm. just because you're removed. And I think people do have, feel, you know, they feel funny about telling you even the constructive criticism that they might have. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it's important for us as human beings to understand how other people view our stories, because oftentimes we'll talk about vision, right? But I think vision only happens when you have the right perspective. True. We are all born with eyes, right? So we are born with the gift to see. But without the right set of lenses, I happen to be wearing glasses. And without the right set of lenses on, you won't be able to read the words that are coming across your screen or read the words that are on the signs as you're driving down the road. And so I think it's important for entrepreneurs to do that. Um, the second part of your question, I'll be honest, I don't remember, but what, it, what was how, the How do part? we take... What we have How you now. take it to leverage it. Yes. Right. I, every, so I, I, oftentimes I'll tell a story, um, but what's important is what happens at the end of the story, right? So for example, I tell a story about um, the very first time I got started in business, Mrs. Donnelly, uh, my, my TV production teacher handed me my first set of business cards when I was 17 years old. She told me I was really talented at video production and I should start a business. May 5th, 2000, she told me that on May 4th, 2006, May 5th, 2006, she handed me my first set of business cards. She wouldn't allow me to say no. And oftentimes I'll end that story by saying that gave me the courage that I needed to take the next step, right? And if I'm talking to someone else about courage, courage happens to be my purpose and mission. And so if I'm talking to someone about courage, um, I'll end the story that way. But if I'm talking to someone about dramatic demonstration, I'll, sometimes I'll say that was the very first dramatic demonstration that happened in my life, right? And, you know, as we're doing this, I'm looking at the business card because I, have the, I still have the very first business card that she gave me, right? And so I think it, what happens at the end is, is how you're able to leverage the story. You want to think about what is the point of this story? Why do, what do I want people to take away from this? If I'm telling you about a specific journey, a very specific moment in my life, how does that help you understand where I want you to go with the story, right? Because one of my favorite shows is called This Is Us. And This Is mm -hmm. Us tells a lot of great stories throughout the show, right? But there's a lesson. What is the lesson? So when I say what happens at the end is the most important, you can, use, you can literally use one story over and over and over, but how you change the ending is the lesson that you leave with someone. That's the lesson that you, you impart in them. And so that is how we as entrepreneurs can leverage stories because if I start with a story, if I wrap what I want you to do or how I want you to do something with the story, that's what takes it a lot further. That's what makes someone moved and feel moved and compelled to actually have what you have to offer. Um, last thing I'll say about that is I, my very first documentary that I ever worked on was uh, called Building the Brand. It was about a entrepreneur who was uh, building a business from the ground up, cosmetic business. And the entire documentary is not about the lipstick, which the lipstick was blue, purple, green lipstick. They were not popular at the time. This was 2009, 2010. Instead, the, the entire documentary is all about women empowerment, feeling comfortable being in the skin that you're in, feeling comfortable mm -hmm. going outside and wearing blue lipstick, which again, it isn't popular. And I think because of that, I know because of that, that is why her business was successful. Within the first 12 months of her launching this business and launching the docuseries, she was able to make $1 million in her business. And it's because of how we wrapped the story, how we told the story. It wasn't about her just building the business. It was about the, the, the confidence that she had in herself, the woman's empowerment that she was trying to impart in others that made other people want to buy the product. And that's how we as entrepreneurs can leverage storytelling. It's just mm -hmm. being real about your journey, being real about where you are, or even as it's happening, right? Like showing the behind the scenes as it's happening. That's what will give a value to what you're creating, whether it's a service or a product, that's what gives it value. 
And because you said this, now I need to end this interview on this topic. How much does courage play into telling your story? Yeah, courage. Um, it takes courage to tell your story for two reasons. One, especially if you're still living the story, right? Uh, it takes courage to be honest about the journey that you're on. So in the beginning of this, I talk about depression, burnout, and anxiety. And I'm still walking through that story, right? I, uh, I am very open and honest, at least through my email list, about the fact that although I've been doing what I've been doing for 15 years, I'm not enjoying it right now. And that's partially what led to burnout. I love what I do. I love storytelling. I don't love the way that I'm doing it. Right. And that takes courage because when, as an entrepreneur, when you reach a certain level of success, it's taboo to talk about the things that you don't like. It's, mm. it's all about the rah, rah and just show that it's roses. And you, here's the wealth that you have because of your success. I think it takes courage if you're still living the story, but I also think it takes courage if you're not still living the story to story that's happened in the past, because oftentimes what I have with clients is they're worried about how people will perceive their stories. And so it takes courage to say the things that you've been wanting to say, to do the things that you've been wanting to do and know that not everyone will agree with it. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's why it takes courage because without courage, you won't be able to go to that next level. You won't be able to take that next step. But storytelling, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is the next step. Right. In 2022, as we're recording this, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an influencer, you cannot escape not telling your story. Right. Just like it's, it's, it's known that you want to grow the business, you have to do marketing. Mm -hmm. Storytelling is a part of that. And right. if you're not telling your story, you, are, you will be left behind. And the reason why is because storytelling doesn't just mean visual storytelling. You can tell your story through written word. You could, you could tell your story through pictures, right? You could tell your story through audio, just like I've done. I've, told, I've shared a few stories on here, very specific moments in time. And I think as entrepreneurs, it is important it does require courage, but it is important to tell your story and um, to never get tired of telling your story. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a broken record. But I tell you what, every time I tell my story, someone is leaning in and they're listening and waiting for that end of that story. It, no matter if I sold it for the first time or the 50th time, it's still a story that will attract the right people to my tribe, that will attract the right people to want to listen and continue to listen. Not everyone will like this podcast episode. But some will, and some will be moved and inspired to take the next step, to, to have the courage. And to me, that's the most important thing, is if I can impart courage in one more person, I have done my job. Mm, love it. With that, I just have four final questions for you. Let's First one is, what's the best piece of advice you were ever given? Best piece of advice, how you do anything is how you do everything. And uh, I live my life depth versus width. I like to go really deep. Mm. Um, with the people that I speak with, with the clients that I work with. And I'm sure, I'm sure as you're listening through this, you, you get that understanding. And so that's, that's how I've lived my life is through depth versus width. And so how you do anything is how you do everything. Share with us one thing on your bucket list. You know, it's funny. I, uh, I have a list called the adventures of Jude Charles. Um, and it is, as much as I'm a very calm and collected person, I also have a side of me that, that's a, a, I like adrenaline-filled activities. So I've been skydiving, I've been ziplining, but one thing I haven't done yet is I want to um, drive a NASCAR vehicle. Oh. So I've been to the Indy 500. I've actually gotten the chance to walk the Indy 500 and go through the muse museum, but I didn't get a chance to drive one of the cars at the Indy 500, and so I'd love to be able to do that. When the toy companies get around to making an action figure of you, what two accessories will it come with? Uh, it will come with a microphone because I have learned the value of communicating and sharing my story. So I, I, up until I'm 80, 90 years old, I will continue to do that. So it'll come with a microphone. The other thing I think it'll come with is, is glasses. I haven't always worn glasses all of my life, but I've shared a little bit about how I see perspective versus vision. And, um, I could easily wear contacts too, but I think for me, have, wearing glasses always reminds me that without the right set of lenses, I can't read um, and I can't see what's in front of me. And so um, I think uh, having a microphone and having glasses, if you have those two things, no matter what business you're in, what you're doing, whether it's Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, or it's me or you, 
what has helped those those people excel, those entrepreneurs excel, is having a microphone and then having the right perspective. Last mm-hmm. thing I'll say about that is Elon Musk. I um I saw a recent interview of him. It was I think it was back in 2010. But he said something that I've never really appreciated about him. He said, I will never, ever, ever give up. It was an interview about um, the astronauts not sharing the same vision that he shared about taking people to Mars or allowing everyday human beings to, to fly in space. And he was hurt by it, but he said, I'm not giving, regardless of if I'm hurt in the, you know, the people that inspired me aren't on my side, I'm never giving up. But that's only because he had the right perspective about his vision and what he saw for humanity. Um, And so that's why I think for me, you make an action figure of Jude Charles and it would be having a microphone and and, and, uh, the right set of lenses. And, you know, I could go on to a whole nother podcast about vision and whatnot. And I'm sure you and I could have a great conversation about that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because vision starts with storytelling too. The story that you tell in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And last one, sir, how do people find you? Yeah, so uh, best place to connect with me is through my private email list, uh, the Dramatic Leverage newsletter. So that is where I talk about storytelling and how to leverage your story um, specifically. And so that is judecharles.co forward slash list. And I'm sure Marlena will put it in the show notes, but it's judecharles.co forward slash list. Love it. Thank you so much. And thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Marlena. It was definitely a great conversation. Um, Looking forward to hopefully doing this again soon. I'd love to. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Please comment, like, or share this episode, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more information on how I can help you create your iconic image, visit marlenasemenza.com.